Now, I did not like my DC electric truck because it had 26 batteries in it. Uh, it's 70 pounds of battery. Uh, and the top speed was 55 miles an hour, and I'd get you killed on the interstate. <laughs> so I didn't like that. Can't stop. <laughs> so our next vehicle, the one we got now, and again, we're not, it's running, it, we're driving it, we're not, it's kind of like studying for a test. Yeah. If you study an hour, you can make a 50. If you study two hours, you can make a 60. If you study four hours, you can make an 80. But it takes 10 to 12 hours to ace yeah, that thing. That's it. Well, that's where we are with this vehicle. It's running. Everything's working. It's not working where we want it to. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, back to this vehicle. Uh, we have an AC electric. Now, you probably hear a lot of, know a lot more about electric and AC and DC than I do. But uh, you're the electric man. Oh, I, I know electric yeah. vehicles. Well, from what, I, from what I've been told and understand, uh, AC is, is more powerful. Better performance. Better range, more efficient. Batteries are challenged. So we got this system from uh, Electro Automotive, and uh, so we have an AC motor on it now. We still have 26 batteries, thank you, but it's it's charged by uh, it's 26 uh, gel cell batteries. So we can run it. Actually, what we've got is the same thing as the Chevy Volt, except we did it with about thirty thousand dollars and three ag students. I understand. General Motors took three billion and fifteen hundred engineers. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going under. <laughs> we, we, we took we took about half a dozen high school students yeah. and about four grand and made a race car that, that holds National Electric Drag Racing Association. Oh, I yeah, I love it. Right. So we can do this with electric. That's, we can do it with hydrogen. It. There's yeah. some good messages here. That's it. Great. But, but anyway, then that AC electric motor, according to the computer, a top speed is 130. Now we haven't okay, done, we cool. hadn't done that yet. So 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 what happens is then uh, the first uh, 50 to 100 miles, and that depends on whether it's that or that and that, a runoff sun electric with our system with TVA green power switch. And then uh, we take the internal combustion engine, the 22 horsepower Diatso that has a generator, we've converted it to run off hydrogen then, and then it charges the 26 gel cell batteries then, that then after we run the sun part, then we run it off the hydrogen from water to get us another. And we hadn't tested it, but theoretically, I mean, right, theoretically, according to all the computer stuff, should get about another 200. So, so that's where we you are. Say 200 miles per gallon. No, 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 no. 200 200 miles, miles per distance. Range. Range. distance. Yeah. See, see, my goal in any of this stuff is 300 miles, because I don't think people is going to be want something to get you 40 miles and right. you can't go anywhere. Right. So, so I, my my goal for anything I build is, is roughly 300 miles. So you know what uh, what I hear is that you're using uh, something very similar to the basic process, which is electrolysis. Oh, yeah. And something very similar to HHO, but what some people call HH2 because it's pure hydrogen, separated during electrolysis. Now, I have the same goal that y'all have. Well, I'm just going a different route. Yeah. I actually have in that building everything you need for 80% of the people in America to drive to work, if, if, as long as they got an 80 mile range, with nothing but sun and water. And, and that's my goal. And, and my goal right now, before I retire and before I ride off into the sunset, thinking I've made my contribution to mankind, is I'm, I'm going to drive across the state in one day 600 miles off sun and water. All right. Now, if I do that, I've made my contribution to mankind. Now, again, I have to admit, I'm not going to tell you it's cost efficient, but I still believe, just like the Model T Ford, somebody will make it better. It'll right. get better and more efficient and better and better. Probably the <laughs> Japanese, but that's okay. So, yeah, no, unfortunately, yeah. Now, would, would your college be willing to sponsor an HHO event, or you know, a hydrogen event? It's not HHO, hydrogen event. I got to, I got to see one of them first. Okay. That I can empirically through research. That's mm -hmm. another word I understand. Empirically. Works. Right. Because I got reamed out on the internet about two weeks ago because I said that I was doing this. And then when I wrote him back and said, well, I hadn't got the results yet, then I was a hero again. Okay. <laughs> again, fellas, please understand, I'm not knocking it. I just, I want to see it 
work, and I want it to work. Right. I'm on your side. Right. I just hadn't been able to do it yet. Well, and one of the reasons why we keep getting uh, erratic, um, uh, you know, readings. results and readings is because we are working on cars that are designed to fight against us. Okay, and that's that's really why uh, you know. I mean, I, for the last year after coming back from Russia, I, I've I've been working on the hydrogen because that's where my focus was. And then I came up against this brick and wall, brick wall. All my data was from 1976, 77, 78. So um, I was old school. I was working with cars that didn't have any electronics on it. So I had to, my whole focus was, well, the electronics are the issue. And so that's why I started delving into that. And that's why, you know, we, we came up with the, the, you know, the eight sensor board because it, unless you can stabilize the this uh, the newer cars okay I mean let's face it we can't we're not gonna be like Cuba driving around in 1955 Chevys okay I mean, come on well maybe we will be but you know uh, <laughs> you know maybe the newest car is the 2008 but you know the reality is that we that we work on cars um, that are going to have computer modules that are going to you know because I I talked to some people you know that took me out to dinner and they said why well, don't we strip the whole engine of all the electronics I said great then we'll all be arrested so let's get you know let's have a reality check. The cars that we have today, you have to look at what we have today and how can we make that car accept the hydrogen, the magnets, the xylene, the, you know, the thermal, whatever, whatever you're doing to your engine and keep consistent results. And the only way we have found, and, it's, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I am, I don't know if you guys notice, I'm like a sponge. My ears are in every direction and, you know, um, be, because... Uh, you know, the, what we found is that if you set parity in your engine, which means the top eight sensors, which we consider, is uh, the 202s, MAP, MAF, air temperature, water temperature, throttle positioning valve, and crankshaft, okay? Those are the top eight sensors that control everything we want to do, okay? So if we can control those and keep those in parity, the computer does not freak out. All right, and the, why you're having the problems is because your computers are freaking. It's had a hundred thousand miles of tailing basically floating like this, and then all of a sudden we throw hydrogen on it, and you know it's exploding in a millisecond, and, we're, and it's used to 50 milliseconds. So that's why you know, and also it's a lot of it is the oxygen. I would love to take my oxygen and throw it away, okay, and just use the hydrogen and get rid of the brown gas mentality, and uh, because the systems that we work in, uh, on are designed to measure oxygen. We throw that extra oxygen into the engine, and that is the first big flag in your computer. Hey, I'm getting 10 times more oxygen than I've ever had in the last 100,000 miles. If you think that doesn't freak out your computer, you're wrong, <laughs> okay? I haven't seen one car, well, actually, the Toyota pickup truck that has wideband um, O2 sensors, can take a little bit of hydrogen, but even that can't take, you know, the white band sensors are better than the narrow band that we have in America. But but really, you know, let's let's say, okay, you know, the hydrogen hydrogen works. So you put it on an old car, you detune the timing, you're in you're there. I mean you're getting uh, excellent mileage. I mean in seventy six we had a full size Ford van with a six cylinder getting fifty five miles at a gallon. So I mean uh, you know, it's not that it hasn't been done. This is all this stuff's been done. But the new electronics are what the area that, that really has to have a handle on it.